In a desperate attempt to save her husband, Will's wife transfers his consciousness into a quantum computer. However, the situation doesn't unfold as anticipated. Welcome back to Movies Explained. Today's film is a sci-fi action from 2014 titled Transcendence. Will is installing a Faraday cage around his garden to keep any signal from interfering with the couple's time. Will and Evelyn Castor are AI researchers who attend a seminar called Evolve the Future and deliver a speech about intelligent machines. Before the presentation, Will's best friend Max joins them. The first to talk is Dr. Max Waters, whose major interest in new artificial intelligence technology is not the final objective itself, but rather what can be learned about people along the way. He is primarily interested in the medical uses of such technology, namely in finding treatments for incurable illnesses and saving lives. Evelyn Castor, the next speaker, gives her thoughts. Intelligent machines will be able to assist humans in overcoming the most difficult tasks, such as poverty, hunger, and even environmental disasters that are all on the rise. She believes they can give the tools needed to repair the world and create a better future for everybody. Evelyn presents the next speaker. Will Castor is the guy who will make it happen. Unlike the previous speakers, he is interested in understanding AI's ability to actually overcome humans in more than one manner. He encourages the audience to envision a strong and self-aware AI with more processing capacity than all of humanity combined as the singularity, or, in his preferred word, transcendence. A member of the audience asks Will whether this means he wants to create a god. Will believes it is something that humanity has always aspired to accomplish. As Will is signing autographs for his admirers after the session, the same person who anxiously raised a question during the session shoots Will. A girl turns back amid the terrified mob to see if the bullet hit him. Will fortunately survives the attack. The news then reports that a terrorist organization has carried out a series of strikes against artificial intelligence laboratories around the country. In the aftermath of the attacks, one of the field's most significant researchers is dead. Max informs Will that one of his colleagues has lost his entire team and is now waiting for them in Will's laboratory, along with the FBI. The next day, FBI agent Donald Buchanan and scientist Joseph visit Will's company to seek help because all of the other labs have been destroyed. They gather at Will's office, where agent Buchanan informs them that the attacks were orchestrated by the terrorist group, Rift, whose major goal is to halt the progress of artificial intelligence since they believe it is a dangerous idea to create an omnipotent computer with a human personality. Will refuses to have the government involved in his projects, but he does agree to work with the FBI. Agent Buchanan requests that he show his previously built artificial intelligence PIN, which takes up a whole room. PIN's a superpower quantum computer, has cutting-edge technology, and identifies both Joseph and Agent Buchanan, despite the fact that they never entered the facility. Will feels disoriented during the talk, and his health worsens when he gets home. Back in the hospital, they discovered that the bullet was tainted with polonium radiation, and Will only has five weeks to live. Evelyn sees her husband's death every day. In desperation, she devises a scheme to upload Will's mind, or consciousness, into the project's quantum computers. Max doubts the rationality of this option, however, agrees to help her in this endeavor. Evelyn shuts off the PIN project and removes part of the quantum codes to hide this project from the authorities. Max and Evelyn begin working on this project non-stop for a month, scanning Will's face, recording his voice, and overcoming some of the computational challenges. After they've completed practically all of the project's work, she uploads her dying husband's consciousness onto the network. A few days later, Will peacefully passes away in his sleep. Evelyn sobs, and Max tries to calm her. When Evelyn returns home after scattering Will's ashes, she learns that their project has failed. However, before she shuts down the computer, something can be seen on the screen that becomes clear when she returns to remove the drives. A message that says, is anybody there, pops up on the screen. Evelyn replies by inquiring whether he is Will. Will's response, delivered in his voice, truly amazes Evelyn. As Will's consciousness merges with the computer hardware, one of the first things he demands is access to the internet so that he can expand his capabilities and knowledge, which seems reasonable. Max has doubts about the demand and whether Will is indeed the mind in the machine, but he is thrown out after a heated argument with Evelyn. Meanwhile, Will starts updating his own code, and Evelyn connects the computer intelligence to the internet via satellite. Will's 
consciousness instantly flows across the huge network of computers and electronic devices, giving him unprecedented access to information and systems. Later, members of the terrorist organization Rift abduct Max on his way out of a pub. Bree, the leader of the organization, which is the same girl who attended the seminar, tells Max that they agree with his previous work, what he wrote previously, which basically says that computers should work with humans rather than in place of them. Bree continues to persuade him by describing to him the dangers of Evelyn's project, but Max is not inclined to help them. The Rift also tracks Evelyn down, but by the time they get to her location, Evelyn has already managed to flee according to Will's instructions. Will's consciousness is transferred to the internet, and she continues to communicate with him. He wires a large sum of money to her bank account and arranges for her to stay in a hotel room because she is unable to return home due to the terrorist threat. Will is also helping the FBI apprehend Rift members by providing them with access to all of their information. Joseph thinks it is Will's old AI computer, PIN, that is assisting them. With Evelyn's support, Will leverages his newfound vast abilities in his virtual body to establish a technological utopia in a desolate desert town named Brightwood. Will's virtual persona settles in with her in their new house as well. In just two years, they achieve groundbreaking breakthroughs in medicine, energy, and nanotechnology. Will also informs Evelyn that they can now regenerate any material faster than before. However, he cautions her that while this sort of technology may initially frighten people, once they understand the benefits, they will welcome it. When a laborer named Martin is robbed and badly beaten by two junkies, Will instantly heals the man, utilizing the facility's cutting-edge technology. In the process, Martin gains incredible strength and can lift very heavy objects as a result of being infused with the nanoparticles. Will can now control Martin since he is an amalgamation of technology and biological materials. Will acquires control of Martin's mind and uses him to speak to and touch Evelyn. She becomes extremely disturbed, and she starts having nightmares about making love with a machine. Many disabled people visit at the center once Martin's video of lifting heavy equipment goes viral. They are ecstatic because they can receive free and successful treatments. It appears to be a kind deed on the surface, but it is actually growing Will's power by allowing him to control a larger number of people. Joseph and FBI agent Buchanan arrive at the technological utopia soon after. Evelyn receives them and takes them on a tour of the facility. Joseph slips a piece of paper into Evelyn's hands before leaving. She becomes even more concerned after reading the scrap of paper that says, run from this place. After leaving the facility, Joseph and Buchanan become very concerned and decide to notify the army. In the meantime, Bree warns Max about the situation in Brightwood. Max chooses to assist Rift at this time, and he plays an important role in unifying the government and Rift against Will, since he is the only one who knows Will's source code and can destroy him by designing a virus against it. Evelyn becomes fearful of Will as she realizes his strength and capacity to know everything about her. She storms out of the facility extremely upset. Meanwhile, explosions hit the region. Max, Rift, and the troops emerge through an underground tunnel. Max asks Evelyn to accompany him, but Martin and other people under Will's influence begin battling them. Because of the nanotechnology, when Max shoots a worker, his wound heals quickly. Some members of Rift flee in an SUV, while the workers chase them down, running at inhuman-like speeds. Martin leaps into the tunnel to follow the rest of the squad, but he gets trapped in a copper fence, cutting him off from Will, and the army shoots him intending to use him and the source code within him to build a virus that will destroy Will. Evelyn is abducted by FBI and Rift operatives, who try to explain to her the dangers of this technology and Will. Max perceives the proliferation of nanoparticles in nature as detrimental, and convinces Evelyn that the artificial intelligence isn't Will, but PIN. Evelyn now believes in their theories as well. They conclude, however, that the only way to stop Will and his ubiquitous nanoparticles is to create a total global blackout that eliminates the usage of electronic technology. Evelyn plans to upload the virus by infecting herself first and then requesting Will to upload her consciousness into his network. When Evelyn returns to the research facility, 
facility, she is astounded to see Will in a newly created biological body that is identical to his previous one. She embraces him and requests that he upload her consciousness, but Will realizes that she is harboring the virus and plans to destroy him. The FBI and the members of Rift are stationed across town, watching the scene via binoculars, and when they notice Will isn't taking Evelyn inside, they unleash an artillery strike on the facility, destroying much of its power supply and critically injuring Evelyn. Will uses his connection with the townsfolk to stop the army. When Max notices Evelyn is hurt, he rushes to the facility with Bree, but his vehicle rolls over on the way. Will takes Evelyn to the lab, where he is forced to choose between healing Evelyn's body or uploading her consciousness to the computer, which will transfer the virus to his network. When Bree threatens Max with a pistol and forces Will to choose between uploading the virus or seeing his friend die, Will chooses to save the lives of people he cares about and begins uploading Evelyn's consciousness and the virus. Evelyn realizes it has always been Will's mind on the computer. He was doing everything he could to make the world a better place for her. Will has implanted nanoparticles across the world, resulting in a global superconscience capable of preventing sickness, purifying the air and water, and rebuilding practically any material. In their final moments together, he asks Evelyn to think about their garden. Max arrives to find the couple dead in each other's arms. Will and Evelyn both die, but the virus also shuts down the internet and all computer-related technologies for good. The film then jumps ahead five years to a time when civilization has moved on to a life without modern conveniences like electricity and communication. Max visits Will and Evelyn's garden in their old Berkeley house and notices that the sunflowers are still in bloom. He notices a water drop fall from the blooms and instantly cleans up a puddle of oil on which it has settled. Max realizes that Faraday's cage has protected some of Will's nanoparticles. We realize at the climax of transcendence that all of our preconceived beliefs about Will's objectives were wrong. While his acts may have appeared frightening and unethical, all he did was in the hopes of making Evelyn's vision of a flawless society a reality. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.